Yeah. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. I think welcome to the Matic Global Conference. So, uh, due to some technical issues, we could not start on the right time. Uh, I'll directly hand over to the or not for the start kick off start session. Over to you. Okay. Thank you, Avinash. So, uh, welcome everybody. Um, I'm very happy and excited to share some uh, insights in how we do our customer journeys for customers and uh, how we approach that. I have the presentation already. So because of the time, uh, let me just start right away. Uh, before I start with going through the slides, um, so everybody still is in session. So Joe, Richard, Paul, Jose, Tamara, Torsten, Trevor, Zoltan, Martin. You guys are still there? Maybe uh, some, if somebody can just put in the chat that I uh, have a feeling that the people are uh, indeed watching this. So uh, please, uh, please do so if you can. Thanks you so much. So let me get started. So uh, for first of all, a uh, short short yeah great thanks thanks everybody thanks so uh before i start um with the journey material uh, first a quick introduction so web mechanic and and multic um uh, i'm doing it solo but uh, there should be somebody of web mechanic but i'll just briefly um talk about them uh, they're a council member, they're a main community contributor, they have, uh, you know, an enterprise and uh, SME SaaS solution based on Motic, of course. They have exclusive features and they're marketing automation experts. And uh, together with us, uh, we can um, we can give technical expertise. We uh, obviously you are using for our clients the web mechanic uh, version of, uh, of Motic and um we can easily and seamlessly integrate marketing automation into uh comprehensive marketing strategies and customer journeys and together we definitely have a added value uh for uh, for customers so let me start um i want to start with uh explaining shortly uh what we uh understand or what we see as a first class customer journey so that we all have the same dis definition because maybe if I don't explain it, uh, uh, you will maybe have a, a, a slightly different or maybe even a completely different uh, view on, on what is a customer journey. So I'm going to start with that. Then I'm going to explain how we build these uh, first class customer journeys. And then in the end, I have a short thing explanation about K2 marketing at the end. So let's get started. So, um, <clears throat> first class customer journeys. The slide is a little bit uh, hanging here. Yeah, there it is. So, I think I'm freezed here. Yeah, there it is. Sorry, guys. So customer journey. So what do we uh, see as a customer journey? A customer journey is a logical sequence. Or uh, not only in the beat. Uh, 
I do think that the tech, the technical uh, infrastructure is not really working today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry for the things. You can continue. Yeah. So, um, where was I? Um, so, I was telling about the customer journey and the, the customer life cycle. So, what we mean with that is that. Um, is that the, the 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 customer life cycle is the overall view that we look that we look at, um, and then within every stage in the customer life cycle, so acquisition, development, and retention, in every stage you have specific customer journeys that you make. So you have a customer journey, or actually multiple customer journeys for acquisition, like getting new customers in. Specific customer journeys for development, so cross and upselling uh, journeys. And if um, yeah, if you reach the stage that a customer is, for example, uh, unhappy, then you have specific retention uh, customer journeys to make. So to finish off the whole um, uh, definition of customer journey, so the customer journey is a logical sequence of contact and interaction moments, uh, specifically for a specific phase in the customer lifecycle, and meaning that the, can have a specific company and customer goal. And we always have uh, five things that we uh, take into account when we develop the customer journeys. First of all, they're non-linear, and that especially is the case for B2B, uh, but can also be the case for B2C. So it can be that a, a, uh, a prospect uh, is uh, further in the funnel or further in the journey, and uh, decides that um, you know the deal can't go through, it's not the right moment or whatever reason, um, and you have to start back again. Uh, I'm not sorry to uh, interrupt here. Can you just speak a little louder? Yeah. I I have the micro uh, microphone like really close to my mouth. I have yeah, yeah. my volume good. output on yeah. maximum. Okay, good, good. Thank you. So uh, nonlinear. Uh, second of all. Uh, the journeys are really about building relationships. Uh, the third point is that we always look at conversion. So what are the conversions in every step in, in the journey? Always have continuous testing going on, eh? A-B testing. Um, and the, 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 the fifth one is uh, that you always should be able to measure the whole journey. Um, and in B2B, that can be challenging because it has multiple systems where the, get, where the data goes through. And I will explain that in the example that I have uh, made. So for the example, I'm going to focus on specifically a B2B acquisition lead generation journey, which I'm going to explain in the end. And for us, eh, the first, first class customer journey is the journey in which a VIP experience is being experienced by the prospect or customer or ex-customer. So we always approach it in a way that we have a first version and then a second version and a third version up until a version where there is so, so well thought of every step in the journey that the prospect or customer feels uh, a VIP experience. You know, they really understand what, uh, where, where, where I stand or what my problems are. And in every step of the journey, they're really, uh, took that into account, uh, and the communication was like really personal as well. That's 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 for us the first class customer journeys. So I just want to check in with you guys. Um, is this clear? Because there was like a technical uh, malfunction uh, in on the internet as well. Uh, does everybody understand what I uh, what I mean with the first class customer journey and how it works? Great, thanks. So now, how to build these first-class customer journeys? Let's continue. So it starts with a well-thought-out journey design. Before you start, always think about what are we exactly going to do. And for us, it's starting with what kind of proposition are you going to offer to whom? So what's the proposition and target group selection? And when you have that defined, then you're going to look at, okay, how are we going to start this journey? It can be with a Google ad campaign. It can be with a Facebook ad campaign, or it could be starting with, uh, with LinkedIn. And with that, I don't mean actually in this case that I'm going to show you guys, it's not about an ad campaign, 
but about a one-to-one -one, uh, LinkedIn acquisition approach. So that means that we actually make a selection of people and then uh, have a whole sequence of uh, um, asking for connection. And if somebody accepts, then there will be several messages sent to that person. And I told you in the beginning eh, that there were five things like continuous testing. And I have a, a, a test for you guys at this moment uh, regarding the LinkedIn uh, connection request. Eh, again, continuous testing uh, for, every, for everyone that's present. This is a real life example of a LinkedIn test. So there are like two messages that have been sent through LinkedIn to connect with somebody. And the left version or the right version, which one do you guys think um, has, has um, uh, realized the highest conversion, so the highest acceptance rate? If you can put it in the chat, so left or right, which one do you guys think that creates the most acceptance? All right, left, right, left. I see three, right, okay, 50-50. 60, ah, uh, okay, interesting. It's 50-50 if I uh, look at the chat. Um, the good answer here is the left one indeed. So the left one creates the highest uh, acceptance rate. But uh, how we do this is that we also look at what kind of functions, what, so what kind of people actually um, uh, uh, accept the most. <laughs> yeah, I understand what you're saying, Richard. So, um, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Uh, but if you, if you, if you, so if you have a, you know, a much bigger, like uh, you have a group of like 800 people that's in your target group, um, then, you know, you need to look at, okay, what kind of message gives me the highest acceptance range to go further. Because, you know, acquisition journey, uh, lead generation, um, of course you can do it like super personal, but that will take a lot of time. And it can be if you have like just a couple of deals are, are needed, then you can of course do a, a completely personalized approach. But if that's not the case and you need like volume, uh, then you have to look at approach like this. Uh, where you have, a, for example, again, a selection of 800 and that you then uh, have a, a message which gives you the highest acceptance rate. Let me continue. So um, the LinkedIn connection request, so you have acceptance or or not. Uh, usually you don't you don't know that on LinkedIn. You, you, you never receive, okay, this person like he, he, he pressed on the on the X button. Um, but anyway, you have accepted or not. And then you've got like a LinkedIn follow-up message one, two, and three. And then after that, it can be that the person reacts through a direct message, or maybe you have added a link in your messaging that goes to a specific landing page. And usually, again, eh, this is business to business. Um, it can be, uh, and it will be uh, in, in a lot of cases, in a lot of companies, an account manager, that will do the follow-up and then there's a whole process of course uh, of the account manager doing uh, his sales process in the meantime actually uh, while we're while we're doing the whole connection request and messaging we also uh, scrape from from the internet the email addresses and uh, with that we can do a couple of messages uh, through the email and this is this is like one of the options. Eh? This is not the 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 only uh, acquisition journey or LinkedIn uh, lead generation that you can do. Again, you can also do stuff with um, with ads uh, going to a specific landing page. Um, but this is just one example that we uh, do a lot for P two P companies. And there's a lot more that I can tell in in detail, but. Uh, regarding the time, I will have to uh, skip a couple of things. Uh, but this is this is basically the whole uh, the whole process that we do. Now, what we use because what you've seen there, we automate every step in it. 
So, and to do that, we uh, we have a, a what we call a, our own uh, K2 technology stack. So we have a social module where we do the LinkedIn messages. We use, uh, of course, uh, yeah, uh, the the Motic version uh, of Web Mechanic. So the Web Mechanic marketing automation is for landing pages, for example, and email. In in the example that I showed as well. And in the middle, we have a customer data platform. That's where the CDP stands for, customer data platform. But I think most of you guys know what that is. Um, and from that CDP, we have um, created dashboards in Power BI to really have a good look on, uh, OK, which step is performing in what way. And we have also the CRM data connected to the CDP so we can have the complete journey uh, uh, visible. So we can actually see, okay, what's the whole conversion on every selection that we do. So I think that's that's something that's, that's not a lot around uh, because you have to connect all those systems together. So I'm just for the for the for this example, let's say we we are using PipeDrive, then so we connect the data from PipeDrive, and that that's specifically um, is the contact that was being approached first. You know, is it in PipeDrive? Can we connect it to the the deal stages that that person has? Um, because with the deal stages, we can monitor. Okay, how is this prospect that reacted? For example, on a LinkedIn uh, campaign or uh, LinkedIn outreach, how is that person um, uh, uh, yeah, developing further? So, is there a meeting planned? Was there was there a meeting planned? Is there a quote? Uh, and finally, of course, was the quote accepted? So, a new customer won or not? So, I'll just break it down. So at the beginning, um, so the selection and the data, so the LinkedIn selection can be like different branches, like ICT, you can do different uh, sizes of companies, you can do specific functions, that's all possible on, on LinkedIn. And we we use the, the, the social module and the CDP as a start of this process. And what we then collect are things like first name, last name, the job title, the LinkedIn profile URL, that's a very important one because that's the thing that we can match later on with the CRM and, the, for example, also the company name. Then with the LinkedIn outreach data, so the next step eh, in, the, in the process is the whole LinkedIn connection request, the follow-up messaging, does somebody react with a direct message or on the landing page, and the, the, the collection of the email address. That whole process is being done also by the social and CDP uh, system. And what you then can see is that we, what we collect uh, among other things is the connection request sent, uh, is the connection accepted also with the date uh, and time. Uh, the, was the message one, two and three sent or just message one or two, etc. And did that person also visit the landing page, of course. And most importantly, you know, was the contact that did, did he or she responded? And the email address, which we can use later on to give a sequence of emailings. So again, here, just bringing back uh, the, fi the five most important things that we always uh, take into account uh, with uh, developing and, and using these, uh, these journeys is building relationships, conversion focus, continuous testing, and measuring the total journey. So then on to the, sa the sales process. Um, what's mainly used there is the whole CRM data. So is there a meeting? The most important, I mean, we, we, we don't follow, okay, there were like two or three or four or maybe even five meetings, but was there one meeting to start with and at the end did that meeting or maybe uh, yeah, maybe there were in uh, uh, several but in the end did it lead to a quote and in the end did it lead to a new customer so if you look at the data that we then collect is what kind of deal stage uh, did that contact have in the crm uh, what was the meeting date what was the you know the outcome was there a quote yes or no 
and what was also the deal amount. So you can also actually calculate uh, the ROI. So that's what we do then for this process and which system we use. And then for the emails uh, to get a person, for example, to the landing page, we of course use uh, web mechanics slash yeah, the Mautic version that they have. Um, and we also add that data to the K2Mac. So you got to think about email send, email open, click through, visit landing page. So what we do during this whole process is from different systems, we collect the data and we put them together in the CDP so that we can always have an insight in how the total journey is going and that we can see in which stage is there a good conversion and in which stage is there maybe a less uh, conversion rate so we can optimize that. And we have, so we have that built in uh, Power BI. And there are multiple possible views like per period, per campaign, uh, per, uh, per selection, uh, per journey step, uh, a full journey overview. Um, and of course, there are also um, uh, requested dashboards which we can, can build. Um, and we, all, we always have for each customer, we have two standard dashboards. So we have one for the email campaigns. Um, yeah, the reason for that is that the reporting module of, of, of Mautic is, is not sufficient for us. Um, and it, it, it has never been a real focus eh, in, uh, in the development of Mautic. Um, so that's why we have created this and of course for the total journey uh, dashboard, which is not really possible in, in Mautic because then you need to create different, um, uh, you know, we, you, you need to create different tables to put all the data in it and Mautic is not really uh, suitable as a, as a CDP. So that's why we, uh, that, that's why we have developed uh, the CDP. So this is how we uh, approach uh, customer journeys. Uh, maybe I went quite quickly, but I try to to stick on the on the um, on the time about K2 marketing. A short story: We are working with Mautic since 2017, so that's uh, quite a while actually. To be honest, um, we do have uh, had a struggle with the community version, and with that I mean uh, things like the scheduling function function uh, doesn't work. Uh, the email builder, although it's better, but it's just not really user friendly. And uh, also the open and click measurements, especially with, uh, with, with all the bots that are there, eh? the, 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 security, uh, the security bots that are there with, uh, with customers, it's, it's, it's hard for us. So we've got, for example, in the web mechanic version, a reCAPTCHA um, functionality that um, um, deletes the, the, the bot clicks on, uh, on emails. And uh, we created K2 add-ons, so the social and the CTP and the dashboarding. Uh, actually, last year, we started at the beginning of last year to create it uh, because we saw that just only using Motic uh, wasn't, yeah, it wasn't complete enough for us to really have to comp yeah, the, 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 the whole journey automated and also to have an insight in every uh, step of the journey. So that's why we, uh, well, sorry, that's why we created those uh, uh, as well. Because uh, order history can't be stored in Mautic. Uh, standard email unsubscribe process in Mautic has a big flaw and that, that especially for B2C companies, that's the case. Uh, because if you unsubscribe, the whole email channel is unsubscribed. While for B2C, you do have people who will unsubscribe, but still want to uh, receive the order confirmation email if they have ordered, for example. Um, the social selling is like completely not present in Emotic, so you cannot do selections from LinkedIn and then uh, do a whole outreach. And uh, we can do that, that, that kind of outreach also on Facebook and Instagram, for example, but then on Facebook groups and Instagram uh, groups. And yeah, the, for us, the dashboarding is, is just not good enough in Motic. So that's why we started using Power BI based on the data in the CDP uh, to create dashboards that were, well, good enough uh, for, uh, for ourselves and for clients. So, um, and 
so we started working with web mechanic uh since since the end of last year actually so um uh, we just started uh we, we well not just started actually but we uh we started at the end of last year and we we're very happy because uh, their version is uh, with much less uh, bugs than in the community version. So, yeah, problems mentioned, one, two are solved and more. So that's it. Any questions? Things you would like to have more information about? Or did everybody leave? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's, it's there. Uh, thank you. Thank you for a very interesting session. Uh, Let's wait for any ah, questions. Are, Richard. Some questions yeah. are there. Uh, no, they are not there. No, they are not available for uh, everyone. Sorry. OK. Then you, then you, uh, yeah, then you can. Um... What's the cost of web mechanic? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, if you go to the, I know it, I know it by heart uh, for the first, because they have several tiers. So from zero to 10,000 contacts, it's 400 euros. And for 10,000 to 20,000 contacts, it's 600. Um, huh. Well, uh, ethical, uh, uh, Valerie, I, I mean, ethical, you, I, I find that really hard. To, I mean, if you are a startup, for example, if you are a startup company and you really need to grow and you really need to uh, to to get new customers in, um, we see that um, happening in the market, uh, especially also with the U.S. companies. Um, I can understand it, and um, if it bothers you. You can click on the spam button or you can delete it or you can send reply um it's a matter i think it's a personal you know it's not not about ethical but i think it's about personal do you um do you yeah do you feel like offended by it or it it, it irritates you uh yeah i think it's something personal um if you have the email address like right on on a website because that's that's basically i mean there are two main sources uh, it can be on LinkedIn, but a lot of people don't have it on LinkedIn. I mean, it, we, we calculated it. it's like 2% of the people have uh, an email address filled in uh, filled on LinkedIn. And with, um, let's say, the email discovery uh, engine that we use, it can be upgraded to 6, 7, 9, 10%, maybe even. So it's not a lot, you know, it's it's not a not 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 huge. Um, I, I myself, so personally, um, I think, and that's how we do it. We always start with a first LinkedIn approach so that there, there always has been a first outreach purely on the LinkedIn platform. And after that action, um, a email can follow, uh, depending on if the client uh, feels comfortable with it. And... Um, yeah, and it's it's not uh, GDPR prohibited, but it's a gray area. It's a gray area. That's that's the case. Is that a is that an answer to your question, uh, Valerie? Because it's sorry, it was a little bit longer answer than just yes or no. I think it's ethical or not ethical. Yeah. No. Okay. Maybe she left, I don't know. Any more questions? I hope that uh, this was, uh, yeah, some, I could give you some insights on how we approach it. Uh, and uh, in a little bit more detail than just a high level. And uh, yeah, if you have, if you have any questions uh, further or you want to know uh, how uh, how we approach things? Then I'm always available for a call or an online uh, meeting. Let me know. the uh, The contact details are uh, right here. Yeah. 
take a take a screenshot of your contact details. You can reach out to them. Not for the for the most very welcome. But yes, I think thanks for answering the, all the questions or not, and thanks for uh, sharing the all the insight to the audience. Uh, I think uh, this is the way like we are ending our sessions. Uh, stay tuned for other uh, next sessions. That's the next, last session of the day. So we'll be back in the next fifteen minutes. All right. I'll be ending the session. Bye, everybody.